today's lecture is on beta oxidation of fatty acids why fatty acids for energy storage two reasons the carbon in fatty acid is almost completely reduced so its oxidation yields the most energy possible fatty acids are not hydrated so they can pack more closely in storage tissues oxidation of fatty acids provides as much as 80% of the energetic needs of mammalian heart and liver under all physiological circumstances the electrons removed from fatty acid during oxidation pass through the respiratory chain driving atp synthesis the acetyl coa produced from the fatty acids may be completely oxidized to carbon dioxide in the citric acid cycle resulting in further energy conservation in liver acetyl coa may be converted to ketone bodies the water soluble fuels exported to the brain and other tissues when glucose is not available lipid digestion digestion and absorption of dietary lipids occur in the small intestine and the fatty acid released from triacyl glycerols are packaged and delivered to muscle and adipose tissues fats ingested in diet bile salts emulsify dietary fats in the small intestine forming mixed meals intestinal lipases degrade triacyl glycerols fatty acid and other breakdown products are taken up by the intestinal mucosa and converted into triacyl glycerols triacyl glycerols are incorporated with cholesterol and apolipoproteins into chylomicrons chylomicrons move through the lymphatic system and blood bloodstream to tissues lipoprotein lipase activated by apo c2 in the capillary converts triacyl glycerol to fatty acid and glycerol in myocyte and adipocytes fatty acids are oxidized as fuels or reesterified for storage conversion of fatty acid from the triacyl glycerols of chylomicrons and very low density lipoproteins to the triglycerides stored in adipose cells note that insulin stimulates both transport of glucose into adipose cells and the synthesis and secretion of lipoprotein lipase from the cells glucose provide the glycerol 3 phosphate for triacyl glycerol synthesis apolipoprotein c2 activates lpl mobilization of triacyl glycerols stored in adipose tissue the hormone binds to its receptor in the adipocyte membrane binding of hormone stimulates adenylyl cyclase via g protein to produce cyclic amp cyclic amp activates protein kinase a which phosphorylates the hormone sensitive lipase and perilipin molecules on the surface of the lipid droplet phosphorylation of perilipin causes dissociation of the protein cgi58 from perilipin cgi58 then recruits adipose tissue triacyl glycerol lipase or atgl active atgl converts triacyl glycerol to diacyl glycerol the phosphorylated perilipin associated with phosphorylated hormone sensitive lipase allowing it access to the surface of lipid droplet activated hormone sensitive lipase converts diacyl glycerol to monoacyl glycerols a third lipase monoacyl glycerol lipase hydrolyzes monoacyl glycerol to fatty acid and glycerols fatty acid leave the adipocyte and transported in the blood bound to serum albumin they are released from the albumin and transported to the myocyte by a specific fatty acid transporter in the myocyte fatty acids are oxidized to carbon dioxide and atp 
let us discuss the answer of the following question. Outline the control of triacylglycerol mobilization. Glucagon and epinephrine trigger their receptors in adipose tissue that activate adenylate cyclase. The increased level of cyclic AMB then stimulates protein kinase A, which phosphorylates two key proteins, perilipin, a fat droplet associated protein, and hormone sensitive lipase. The phosphorylation of the perilipin restructures the fat droplet so that the triacyl glycerols are more readily mobilized and it triggers the release of a co-activator for the adipose tissue triglyceride lipase or ATGL. Activated ATGL then initiate the mobilization of the triglycerols by releasing a fatty acid from triacyl glycerol forming diacyl glycerol. Diacyl glycerol is converted into free fatty acid and monoacyl glycerol by the hormone sensitive lipase. Monoacyl glycerol lipase completes the mobilization of fatty acid with the production of free fatty acid and glycerol. Fate of glycerol The glycerol released during triacyl glycerol degradation cannot be metabolized by adipocytes because they lack glycerol kinase. Glycerol is transported through the blood to the liver, which has the kinase. The resulting glycerol 3 phosphate can be used to form triacyl glycerol in the liver or can be converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate by reversal of the glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase reaction. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate can participate in glycolysis or gluconeogenesis. In the adipose tissue, glycolysis supply the glycerol 3 phosphate for triacyl glycerol synthesis. Let us discuss the following question. What are the three stages of triacyl glycerol utilization? In stage 1, triacyl glycerols are degraded to fatty acids and glycerol, which are released from the adipose tissue and transported to the energy requiring tissues. In stage 2, the fatty acids are activated and transported into mitochondria for degradation. In stage 3, the fatty acids are broken down to step-by-step -step fashion into acetyl-CoA, which is then processed in the citric acid cycle to produce more ATP. Beta oxidation of fatty acids. The process begins with the oxidation of the carbon that is beta to the carboxyl carbon. So the process is called beta oxidation. Fatty acid activation by the formation of the fatty acyl CoA derivative occurs in two steps. The conversion is catalyzed by fatty acyl CoA synthetase and inorganic pyrophosphatase. The overall reaction is highly hexagonic and it costs 2 ATP because both acid and hydrate bonds have been broken. Carnitine as a carrier. Carnitine carries fatty acyl groups across the inner mitochondrial membrane. Short chain fatty acids are carried directly into the mitochondrial matrix. Long chain fatty acid cannot be directly transported into the matrix. Long chain fatty acids are converted to as acyl carnitines and are then transported in the cell. Acyl-CoA esters are formed inside the inner membrane in this way. Carnitine shuttle, transport of long chain fatty acid into mitochondria. The fatty acyl-CoA crosses the outer mitochondrial membrane. Carnitine acyl transferase 1 in the outer mitochondrial membrane transfers the fatty acyl group to carnitine and releases coenzyme A. The fatty acyl carnitine is translocated into the mitochondrial matrix as carnitine moves out. Carnitine acyl transferase 2 on the inner mitochondrial membrane transfers the fatty acyl group back to coenzyme A to form fatty acyl CoA in the matrix. Pathological conditions result if fatty acid cannot enter the mitochondria. A number of diseases have been traced to a deficiency of carnitine 
carnitin transferase or translocase. The symptoms of carnitin deficiency ranges from mild muscle cramming to severe weakness and even death. Inability to synthesize carnitine may be contributing factor to the development of autism in males. Muscle weakness during prolonged exercise is a symptom of a deficiency of carnitine acyl transferases because muscle relies on fatty acid as long-term source of energy. Let us discuss the following question. Explain why people with a hereditary deficiency of carnitine acyl transferase 2 have muscle weakness. Why are the symptoms more severe during fasting? Transport of long chain fatty acid into mitochondria is essential for their oxidation. The fatty acyl CoA crosses the outer mitochondrial membrane. Carnitine acyl transferase 1 in the outer mitochondrial membrane transfers the fatty acyl group to carnitine and releases coenzyme A. The fatty acyl carnitine is translocated into the mitochondrial matrix as carnitine moves out. Carnitine acyl transferase 2 on the inner mitochondrial membrane transfers the fatty acyl group back to coenzyme A to form fatty acyl CoA in the matrix. If there is a deficiency of carnitine acyl transferase 2, fatty acids cannot be transported into mitochondria for oxidation. The muscles could not use fats as fuel. Muscles could use glucose derived from glycogen. However, when glycogen stores are depleted as after a fast, the effect of the deficiency is specially apparent. ATP production via Fatty acid oxidation takes place in three stages. Stage 1. A long-chain fatty acid is oxidized to yield acetyl residues in the form of acetyl-CoA. This process is called beta-oxidation. In stage 2, the acetyl groups are oxidized to carbon dioxide via the citric acid cycle. During stage 3, Electrons derived from the oxidations of stages 1 and 2 pass to oxygen via the mitochondrial respiratory chain providing the energy for ATP synthesis by oxidative phosphorylation. Reactions of beta oxidation Beta oxidation consists of a sequence of four reactions that result in the shortening of the fatty acid chain by two carbons. The steps include the following. Oxidation, which produces FADH2. Hydration, addition of water molecule. A second oxidation, which produces NADH. Thiolytic cleavage, releases a molecule of acetyl-CoA. As I mentioned earlier, the beta oxidation consists of four separate reactions. In the first step, a double bond is formed between beta and alpha carbons by acyl-CoA dehydrogenase that transfers two electrons to FAD. In the next step, an OH from water is added to beta carbon and a hydrogen from water is added to alpha carbon. In the third step of beta oxidation, hydroxyl group of the beta carbon is oxidized to a ketone. The electrons are transferred to NAD plus to form NADH. In the last reaction of the sequence, the bond between beta and alpha carbon is cleaved by a reaction that links a coenzyme A to the beta carbon and acetyl CoA is released. The shortened fatty acyl CoA repeats these four steps until all of its carbon are converted to acetyl CoA. Beta oxidation is spiral than cycle. 
In the last spiral, cleavage of the 4-carbon fatty acyl CoA provides two acetyl CoAs. Even chain fatty acid such as palmitoyl CoA, which has 16 carbons, is cleaved seven times, produce 7 FADH2, 7 NADH, and 8 acetyl CoA. Let us answer this question. Describe the repetitive steps of beta oxidation. Why is the process called beta oxidation? The repetitive steps are oxidation, which produces FADH2, hydration, which add water molecule. A second oxidation produces NADH. The last step is thiolytic cleavage releases a molecule of acetyl CoA. In symbolic notation, the beta carbon atom is oxidized. That's why it is called beta oxidation. Let us go into the clinical insight of beta oxidation of fatty acid by answering this critically thinking question. The question is, a deficiency in acyl CoA dehydrogenase presents itself early in the life or after a period of fasting. Symptoms include vomiting, lethargy and sometimes coma. Not only are blood levels of glucose low, but also starvation induced ketosis is absent. Provide a biochemical explanation for the last two observations. The absence of ketone bodies is due to the fact that the liver the source of ketone bodies in the blood cannot oxidize fatty acid to produce acetyl CoA. Moreover, because of the impaired fatty acid oxidation, the liver becomes more dependent on glucose as an energy source. This dependency results in a decrease in gluconeogenesis and a drop in blood glucose levels, which exacerbated by the lack of fatty acid oxidation in muscle and a subsequent increase in glucose uptake from the blood. Energetics of oxidation of palmitic acid Stoichiometry of the oxidation of palmitoyl CoA is palmitoyl CoA plus 7 FAD plus 7 NAD plus 7 CoA plus 7 H2O results in 8 acetyl CoA plus 7 FADH2 plus 7 NADH plus 7 H plus. Assumes 1 NADH equals 2.5 ATP and 1 FADH2 equals 1.5 ATP from respiratory electron transport. The yield of ATP during oxidation of one molecule of farmitail CoA to carbon dioxide and water will be 108 ATP molecules as detailed shown in the table. Regulation of fatty acid oxidation. Regulation of fatty acid oxidation takes place at three levels. Number one, the availability of fatty acids. In the adipose tissue, the hormones glucagon and epinephrine activate hormone sensitive lipase by phosphorylating the enzyme. Activated hormone sensitive lipase hydrolyzes the triacyl glycerol and releases the free fatty acids. The second level of regulation of fatty acid oxidation is allosteric regulation. Carnitine acyl transferase 1 is the key regulatory enzyme of fatty acid oxidation. Carnitine acyl transferase 1 is inhibited by malonyl CoA which is synthesized by acetyl CoA carboxylase from acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA carboxylase is stimulated by insulin in the liver and inhibited by AMP dependent protein kinase in muscle and liver. The third level of regulation is the rate of ATP use controls the electron transport chain which regulates the oxidative enzymes of beta oxidation and TCA cycle. Oxidation of odd chain length fatty acids. 
successive spirals of beta oxidation cleave each of the bonds marked with dashed lines producing acetyl CoA except for the three carbons at the omega end which produce propionyl CoA. The propionyl CoA is ultimately converted to succinyl CoA. That is the end of this lecture. Thank you very much for listening. Any questions please?